Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer, and we're going to take a look at connectivity issues with MIDI devices, uh, including Touch OSC and your desktop, and why aren't they talking to each other? So connectivity issues can be super frustrating. I recently rebuilt both of my computers. I deleted everything and I reinstalled the OS. And on my desktop, I included a couple new hard drives. So I was really starting from scratch and I was running into these uh, basically errors that were only for MIDI. So I was able to get OSC to connect, but I was having a lot of trouble with MIDI through a wired system. Now there are a couple different ways you could do MIDI, right? You could use the bridge and send MIDI over Wi-Fi. But what I was trying to make work was MIDI through uh, a wired connection. So I'm gonna talk about some of the ways that I solved that. And before we look at some of these uh, solutions that I have uh, witnessed, I should say, uh, some of them were recommendations from friends. Uh, one of the first things you're gonna wanna make sure is that your connections and your ports are all set up on your device. Um, sometimes you can have a problem with uh, your firewall. So if you are sending MIDI over Wi-Fi or OSC isn't working, something like that, uh, it could be that your firewall on your network or on your desktop device is blocking incoming messages. So make sure you check that. We're gonna talk about the bridge, but something I've said in previous videos is you have to be careful, especially if you are a live performer using uh, Touch OSC at a venue, and it's the venue's Wi-Fi, which changes every time you're at a different venue, right? So the address will change, uh, probably some of the network connectivity things with the firewall will change from venue to venue, but then for OSC, your IP address will probably change as well. So these are things that you'll wanna make sure that you uh, fix in advance uh, and make sure those are working. Now, the bridge is a system from TouchOSC that makes it so that you can send MIDI messages from TouchOSC over Wi-Fi. So the bridge isn't going to help your system when you're connected via wire, uh, and you're gonna need the bridge in order to send MIDI over Wi-Fi. And this is one of the reasons why, if you're a live performer, I don't recommend using Wi-Fi, because you're gonna have to go through your venue's Wi-Fi uh, a lot of things are gonna change from each show, so it's better to have a system that's always consistent, and I recommend using a wired setup. So that's the bridge. You'll use that if you're going over Wi-Fi. You know I've said that like six times now, but that's to reiterate that the bridge is only for over Wi-Fi. Speaking of your connections, there are a few different ways that you connect, so you have to make sure that Touch OSC on whatever device you're using, Samsung, Android, uh, Apple, make sure that your connections are set up correctly. Now, if you haven't seen my Back to Basics video that I did a few weeks back, which kind of updated how Touch OSC works, it was a new video on that, definitely check that out because I think I go into a lot of detail on all of these different components of Touch OSC and how the software works. But real quick, here in Touch OSC, if you look at your connections, you'll see MIDI and you'll be able to select your port that way. You can see I have a lot of different ones. OSC, this is where you'd be selecting your ports and putting in your IP address. Now your IP address, of course, depends on you and your system. And this is another one of those things that would change if you're on different Wi-Fi uh, at different venues, but you can always check in your home network just, uh, you know, Google is your friend, but also 192.168.0.1 or .1.1, something like that to access your network and you can check out what is my IP address. So you're gonna need to know that for your tablet device and your desktop if you're connecting the two, right? So one of them is going to be your tablet device. You're gonna wanna know that uh, IP address so that you can send things from the desktop to your tablet device. Now the port is something you're going to set up. It's not something you can find. Uh, you would want to use an open port. There are recommended ports that folks use for OSC. Uh, some of them have been uh, sending, so your desktop machine would be receiving at 12101, that's the port name, and then your tablet device would be receiving at 9000. That's something I've used with a lot of Felix's uh, templates, especially the one to send your keystrokes from TouchOSC. 
Another one that I've used, especially when I've been working with Ableton, and again, these are somewhat arbitrary, somewhat from other information I've found on the internet. I'm sending, so the desktop receiving and sending from the iPad is 5300 or 53,000, 53000. And then the receive on the tablet device would be 3333. I kind of just set those up. You'll have to see what works for your system, but try one of those. Uh, I don't know that there's a wrong answer. There probably is. Back on Touch OSC Mark 1, we had different ones that were recommended. A lot of the time, it was 8,000 for your receive and 9,000 for your send or vice versa. So check those out as well. But like I said, those are going to be set by you and your device. So back to my story here. I had this newly set up desktop device with my tablet device and they couldn't talk to each other. MIDI wasn't getting across. So one of the ways I was able to check this and make sure that everything wasn't working was through Hexler's program protocol. Now I've talked about this before, but protocol is for MIDI logging and monitoring. So you can see all of the different uh, signals that are sent through, all the messages uh, from a variety of types of devices, from your tablet to your uh, mixer uh, to your MIDI keyboard. So this is a great way to check to see what messages are coming through and whether they are working. And if they're not working, then that means that the problem isn't necessarily uh, in touch OSC software, it's a connectivity issue. Because if you can't see it uh, as a device that could send a message, that means it's just not connected. So you'll have to get it connected first before you can really build your template and make sure everything's working. Right, so these are some of those basic issues that we often come across. Now, I kept going through all of these different things and still it wasn't working. So it had to be a different issue. And what I came into was there is a driver issue missing on my desktop. And this could have been something I set up a long time ago, I don't remember, but this is how I solved it. These are three different ways with PC uh, that you could hopefully solve your MIDI message issue. Let's look at the first one, which was recommended to me, which is using MIDI OX. So this is MIDI OX, and this is a obviously ancient looking website over here, uh, but this is a MIDI utility, like it says here, that is for monitoring and filtering uh, MIDI messages. So that means that it can help keep track of incoming MIDI messages. So you could download this, set it up on your system, and see if you can set it up to uh, receive your MIDI messages. Now you'd want to make sure that you're downloading the most up-to-date version for whatever your operating system is. So this is MIDI OX uh, and this is the monitor. Uh, you can go to options and then MIDI devices and this should show you all of the inputs and outputs um, and hopefully you're able to find your device or add it to this. There's a lot of great information online about MIDI OX so you can look into how to set that up with your system and get your device working through that. Now, one that I've used before that really works for me is RTP MIDI. RTP MIDI is another uh, utility, like a network MIDI driver, like it says right here for Windows and Apple, and this allows communication. Uh, so this worked really well for me. So this is RTP MIDI, which I just launched, and you can see up top it says using Apple Bonjour. Bonjour? Bonjour. I took French for like four years. I remember very little of it. So we're really getting into the nitty gritty here on network stuff. And I'm a composer who knows nothing about anything. So I'll try to explain this as best I can. Don't comment below if I'm getting it wrong. Just kidding, do. Help clarify for all of us laymen. Uh, but basically what I understand is it's a system from Apple that you can download and it helps locate other devices on your network, like your printers or maybe touch OSC on an Apple device. Uh, so it helps locate those and does some sort of magic with communications between your desktop and that device. But yeah, this is another component that you can download from Apple, just Google, Apple Bonjour, and you can see how to download it. A lot of the time it's included in iTunes. So one of the things I tried was downloading iTunes with the full package 
to make sure that could speak with my iPad as well. And that's not a bad idea for you, especially if you're coming from a PC. Make sure that connectivity works because if iTunes is seeing your iPad, then you know that it's working and it's just a MIDI connectivity issue. So here you could add your device. So plus and then uh, find your device if it doesn't pop up automatically. Mine did, it automatically popped up, hit connect, and uh, you can see I just added a second one here. So I'll get rid of this other one. But this is what the name of my iPad is. So this is what showed up. And then this is my desktop. I renamed this to iPad because it originally said desktop and then a whole bunch of numbers. That was the identifying name of my uh, desktop on my network. And so I wanted to call this iPad and I enabled that and it's been working no problem since. Now, another one of the issues that I kept coming across when I was working on setting everything back up was that in Reaper, it wasn't showing my Touch OSC iPad as a connectable device. So if you go to preferences and then MIDI devices in Reaper, uh, you can see anything that could be connected. So right here, if you were to reset all, um, you should be able to see everything that can be connected. Now, this is my old one right here. Uh, this iPad and you can see that it's enable control there's these uh, exclamation points it's not working and that was also uh, the case down here and you can see I have a ton of different uh, MIDI devices here that I use input and output um, but I had to add something new using RTP MIDI so once you have this set up here in RTP MIDI uh, you've enabled this then you'll want to open up Reaper because if you don't have that set up before you open Reaper, Reaper will have problem uh, seeing anything that's been connected. So you always want to have all of your devices turned on and connected before you open your DAW. So right here you can see it lists uh, that device. And if I double click here, uh, you may have it look like this where it's disabled first uh, for the first time you're using it. And then you'll need to enable input and control. Uh, you'll also want to enable uh, it on the output end apply and you should be fine and then uh, on my uh, template here I have a button that I can make this red so let's push that button you can see it's red I could go yellow or blue or green even purple now RTP MIDI is a great utility and I definitely recommend it it's worked well for me uh, and that is really what was able to solve my MIDI connectivity issues now another issue that could be causing a problem is your system configuration on Windows. So open that start menu and type in system config uh, and then you can take a look through the services tab and see if you have things that are disabled. It could be that there's some issue in there that is causing uh, some connectivity issue. I've had that in the past. Uh, don't really know why that happened. Um, you know, check your USB ports always make sure those are correct. And of course, you know, the basic things like your cable, make sure those are all good to go as well. So these are the ways that I have solved connectivity issues on a PC. Let's take a look at something on a Mac device. So if you're using a Mac, all you have to do is check out the audio MIDI setup. Um, I recommend go opening your finder and then just searching that. And it'll show you all of your different devices and you will have to turn them on. So if you haven't played around with this, definitely take a look at that. Uh, this will help you get that all set up. And of course, I covered how to do that in one of my previous videos about GarageBand with Touch OSC and also Logic with Touch OSC. So go back and check those out uh, and hopefully you can see how I've used that in the past. So yeah, connectivity issues can be super frustrating and confusing. So if you have more trouble with that, uh, you know, throw your questions in the comments below. Uh, check out the Facebook and the Discord group because people help each other out with things like this all the time. Uh, as we all know that support uh, can be a little slow from companies, so bear with Hexler as they may be slow to respond to some things. But also rely on the community because that's what the community is for. And also, be kind. If somebody answers your question, be nice to them. Say thank you. So hopefully all this information helps you with any connectivity issues you're having with whatever MIDI device or Touch OSC. So hopefully you learned something today and you can like this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel as we check out more. And I uh, want to say a big thank you to the folks on the community who helped me find the different uh, utilities like 
uh, MIDI OX and RTP MIDI. Uh, I had forgotten that I had actually had those downloaded. I checked in my old drive. Uh, I reinstalled it to my computer to see what was missing. And yeah, I had downloaded those probably back in like 2018 or 19. Uh, but those are definitely useful utilities. Uh, so definitely check those out and add them to your system to make everything work a little bit better. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.